Well, good morning again if you just joined us. I was just scrolling through the comments and I just want to say hi to a couple of you who are with us. And so Joanne, Nancy, uh, Lisa, Shannon, Elaine, Jay, I see you. And so thanks for joining us this morning. Um, today we're going to talk about inv- you know, invitation. And before we dive into that, it reminds me about the time I was in the fourth grade. I was invited to a party hosted by one of the popular girls in the, in, in the grade. And I didn't know her, so I didn't really care much about it. But when my friends found out that I was invited, they were all egging me to go. I had no idea what I was missing out on. So I tried to convince my parents, but being mom, they shut that down pretty quick. No, you're not going to any party. They didn't realize that this invitation was to gain some serious fourth grade popularity cred so that I could climb up that, that school hierarchy and become cool and become somebody. I'm curious about you. Let me know in the comments, how cool were you in school? On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the coolest kid, and then 1 being a complete nerd, where did you fit in? And so let us know in the comments. My parents wanted me to climb the education hierarchy, to be smart, become a doctor or a lawyer. Now, unfortunately, neither happened. (laughs) Wasn't cool in school, and I didn't become a doctor or a lawyer. You see, invitations, they come and go. And occasionally, there are significant invitations that are life-changing. Maybe it's an invitation to a job opportunity or to meet the love of your life. Maybe it's an invitation to pursue an education, uh, pursue education, or maybe to be part of an amazing community. See, all those are great invitations, but there's an even greater invitation that we've received that we might miss out on if we aren't aware of it. It's an invitation that some of the most religious people in the Bible missed out on, and if they missed out on it, I'm worried that maybe we might miss out on it. And if you're wondering what that invitation is, I'm so glad that you joined us today to find out what that invitation is. I'm going to give you a little hint. We're in our 40 days of prayer this this week, uh, continuing our series. And today our theme is being reawakened to the mission of Christ. It's going to have to do something about that. And so hang tight. We're going to jump into Luke chapter 14, verses 16 through 24 to unpack it. And so if you've got a Bible, you've got a Bible app, if you've got a Google search, go ahead and pull up Luke chapter 14, verses 16 through 24. I'd love for you to read that with me wherever you are in a little bit. And so while you turn to that passage, I'm going to give you a little background on what's happening because the passage that we're going to read in a little bit is Jesus' response to what's happening. And so before Jesus responds in this passage here, Jesus is eating with Pharisees. And the Pharisees are the elite religious leaders of that time. They are the elite of the elite. Jesus knows that the Pharisees say they love God and they say that they obey God and they do what God tells them to do. But Jesus finds inconsistencies in what they say and what they actually do. The Pharisees claim to know God's desire, but they abuse their status as being the elite religious leaders to kind of do whatever they want. And so Jesus offers them a parable, which we're going to read in a little bit here, to illustrate the point that he's trying to make and illustrate what God wants them to do. And so this is what Luke chapter 14, verse 16 through 24 says. Read along with me. Jesus replied, A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I have just bought a field and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen and I am on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I just got married and I can't come. The servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there is still room. 
Then the master told his servant, go out to the roads and country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. See, in this parable, the host represents God and the servant represents a person who loves and obeys God. The banquet represents heaven where God and all his faithful followers will celebrate and enjoy each other's presence. And the parable tells us that God sends his servant to remind all of his invited guests about the invitation to the banquet, but they choose not to come. The guests who decline the invitation are the Pharisees. Again, the Pharisees say they believe in God. They say they love God. They say they know everything about their religion. They even point out the mistakes and sins of other people. But when it comes time to do what God asks them to, they all have excuses and don't follow through. And as a result, the host tells his servant then to extend the invitation to the poor, the crippled, the blind, the lame. And all those, they come. You see, the poor, the crippled, the blind, the lame, those were people the Pharisees considered to be sinful, to be unclean, or lived messed up lives. And so in their eliteness, they looked down upon the poor, crippled, blind, and lame. They believed that those individuals might be able to come, but first they needed to be elite like them. And then not only are they do they come? But again, I'm sure this Pharisees are surprised that these less thans are invited, even though they are nothing like them. Nothing like they thought that, that a guest to God's banquet would be like. And, not if that, and, if that, that's, and if not that's not shocking enough, the invitation is then extended even further to those far out into the country. You see, in the context that this was written in, these individuals on the outskirts of town were considered complete outsiders. The Pharisees believed that their group of people were God's exclusive people, that they were God's chosen people, that no one else would ex experience God's blessing, but only they would. And so when the parable says the, the servant invites those in the outskirts, those way out in the country, it means that God's promise and blessing extended to all all of the people, not just the Hebrew people. The servant invited those who would never be invited to this banquet or thought that they would, or at least the Pharisees thought who, that, that they would never be invited to the banquet. And not only are they invited, but in verse 23 it says that the master told the servant to go out and compel them to come. The word compelled stuck out to me as I was reading this passage. And so compel means to make something necessary, maybe by force or threat, by plea, by persuasion, or even a humble request. You see, this invitation wasn't just an afterthought. It wasn't a matter of trying to fill the room, but the master wanted the servant to go compel, to, to literally maybe beg, plead, to make a point, to persuade guests to come in. The host did this because he wanted people to come to his banquet. And the people that he invited completely missed out on the memo, completely missed out on the invitation. And the point that the parable, parable here makes us this. Jesus' mission is to invite everyone to experience God. Jesus' mission is to invite everyone to experience God. You see, we all have been invited by Jesus to experience God. We've all received that invitation. And there shouldn't be anything stopping us to experience God. This is an all-inclusive banquet, an all-inclusive party. 
and our responsibility is to intend and also invite everyone else. So what does this mean for us? What does it mean for you and I in the next couple hours, in the next couple days, in the next week here? I think there's two things that we can take away. First, have you and I, have we accepted Jesus' invitation to attend God's banquet? And if we haven't, are we making an excuse not to experience God? And if we're making an excuse, why are we making an excuse? Second, if we've accepted that invitation into God's banquet, have you invited anyone? In the next couple of minutes here, I want you to take some time and think and reflect. If you want to, maybe you can even put your thoughts down in a journal or maybe even the comments below. But have you invited anyone else to this banquet? Because again, you and I, we're invited. And we're also responsible to invite others. Maybe take into consideration who do you want to invite to experience God? Is there anyone on your mind, on your heart? Can you think of anyone who you've wanted to invite to church in the last day or week or month here? Take a moment to ponder on that. Who do you want to invite to experience God? And take another couple seconds here and take it to consider who should you invite? You see, before the parable, Jesus tells the Pharisees it's easy to invite friends. It's easy to invite those who, who, uh, who we're friends with, who we're family with. But Jesus also challenges who should we invite? Because the Pharisees didn't see that they were supposed to invite the blind, the crippled, the poor. They didn't know they were supposed to, they didn't realize they were supposed to invite the outsiders. And so who should you invite? Take a second to ponder that. And then lastly, who do you not want to invite? I know this question kind of plays in with who should you invite, but I think an even harder question is who do you not want to invite? Who's your enemy? Who's people that you're with that you don't enjoy their company as much or at all? You see, the outsiders, the people in the country were ones who the Pharisees did not want to invite. And so who in your life do you not want to invite? Those are people that we need to invite to God's banquet as well too. Every one of these people are called to invite, to, to be invited and to experience God. And whether it's someone that you want to invite to experience God, whether it's someone that you should invite but you just don't really want to or don't really care to, or it's someone who you just don't, don't want to invite at all, Jesus calls us to compel them to come. So how can you be compelling? How can we show them? How can we plead with them? How can we beg them to come? I think as I was thinking about this, and with us being a second, third gen, a next gen church and beyond, one of my favorite things about being Hmong, or at least one of my favorite things to watch but not experience, are Asian polite fights. If you've never experienced an Asian polite fight, it can be complicated, but in a nutshell, this is what happens. Whenever you're at a special gathering, it's time to eat there's typically a polite fight that will go on because when the host invites the guests to eat, oftentimes the guests will decline a couple times, maybe even more. And even though the host is sincere, 
the guest doesn't want to come across as rude or even disrespectful. And it's believed, jokingly sometimes, that the host needs to invite their guests to eat at least three times when the meal is ready to assure the guest, to make the guest sure that they are truly invited. The host needs to make sure their guest knows that they are special and they really want them to be there for the occasion. Now, it might sound like the guest is conceited or thinks highly of himself, but I assure you, a lot of times the guest is, just wants to know that, hey, I, am I truly invited or you know, is this just for show? Now, sometimes it gets so bad that the host will literally drag, drag the guests to the table to show them that they are truly invited. I think that's an illustration of what it looks like to con- compel somebody. Now, I've engaged in my share of polite fights on both ends. I find them really awkward on both ends. But once the polite fight is over and I give in, whether I'm the guest or when the guest gives in, there is a deep sense of knowing that I am truly invited or that my guest knows that they are truly invited. And so similarly, you and I, we're invited to God's dinner table for this banquet. And part of our invitation is to invite others too. And we need to compel them, even if it means engaging in a polite fight. Let's pray. God, I thank you so much for preparing a banquet for all of us, Lord. When we talk about being with you, Lord, oftentimes we think directly of the consequence of not believing you and going to hell. And that, while that is a reality, there is also a reality that if we do know you and that we accept your invitation, God, that we get to partake in this banquet, we get to feast with you, that this banquet that you're preparing for us, Lord. Meal times for us are something, are, are things that, that are normal. And we know a banquet is something very special and very unique. And that much of the culture that Jesus was in when he was on earth, the, the table, the dinner table, having meals around the dinner table was very meaningful. It's a place to experience each other. It's a place to be intimate with each other, to enjoy each other's presence. And so, God, we thank you for the opportunities that, the opportunities that you've given us to be a part of this banquet. And we thank you for, for the opportunities that we can accept this banquet, through this invitation, Lord. God, for us, for some of us who are unsure and who are invited, or if we're unsure to accept that invitation, would your Holy Spirit move in our lives and remind us, even if the Holy Spirit has to engage in a polite fight, that we are indeed invited into this banquet. And God, may we go to our neighbors and to our friends and to, to the people that we should invite and the people that we don't even want to invite, Lord, and have a have a have the heart to realize that this isn't our party that we're inviting them to, but it's your party that, that you're inviting them to. And so allow us to have a heart that would be compelling, compelling to invite them to this banquet, to this party, knowing that you care for them as much as you care for us and that you love them as much as you love us. So wherever we're at, Lord, whether we've accepted the invitation, if we're uncertain about the invitation, if we need to extend the invitation, would your spirit move in our hearts, in our, in our minds, in our lives today, the next couple hours, the next week here, Lord, to invite others to your banquet. We thank you. We pray and lift this all up in Jesus' name. Amen.